the Democratic field is narrowing. Congressman Eric Swalwell tonight leaving the race. He's the first candidate to do so since the race really began, and he's planning to run for re-election to Congress instead. Congressman Swalwell joins me uh, out front now. And Congressman, I appreciate your time. Look, I know this was a really hard decision, and you were on the debate stage just a couple weeks ago. You had some really big moments. What made you choose to get out of the race now? Good evening, Aaron, uh, and thanks for having me on. You know, I said from the beginning I was running to win and to make a difference. And the issue that would have been my top priority as president was to end gun violence. And I, I feel like we did advance that issue to a top tier issue. But I also promised my family and my constituents that I'd be honest about our chances. And after the debates and as the fundraising quarter closed, it, it just wasn't there. And if mm. we didn't see a path to winning, there was no other reason uh, to stay in. And so I want to you know, narrow this field and, and let others have their shot so we can get a nominee who can beat Donald Trump. So, you know, I want to go through, as you raise, talk about the fundraising, but also how many people are on that debate stage. And I just went through some of those numbers, right? Together, Democrats uh, raised twice what Trump individually raised in this quarter. But he brought in, uh, you know, more than twice what any individual Democrat has, right? So in other words, it's, it's, it's broken up among a lot of different people. Do more Democrats need to follow your lead, Congressman, and get out of the race, get off that debate stage so you can get a nominee? You know, it's a really personal decision, Aaron. And I would just say I support the Democratic Party process led by Tom Perez, which is to narrow or, or to narrow the field and raise the thresholds. I, I do think as time marches on, as we go to this July debate and then the September debate and the polling threshold and the donor threshold goes up, that'll be good. Uh, and it's enough time for anyone who's on the stage right now to make their case and see their campaign grow. Uh, but we do want to really you know, start to see the field shrink so that candidates can contrast themselves. And I just found the hardest thing was to contrast myself with so many other candidates when you have a field of you know, 20 plus individuals. Yeah, I mean, and that was the hard thing, right? Now, but I mentioned at the debate, when you had, you had 10 people on the stage, obviously, both nights, your night, you still had some really memorable moments, uh, including uh, this one. I was six years old when a presidential candidate came to the California Democratic Convention and said, it's time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans. That candidate was then Senator Joe Biden. Joe Biden was right when he said it was time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans 32 years ago. He's still right today. If we're going to solve the issues of automation, pass the torch. If we're going to solve the issues of climate chaos, pass the torch. If we're going to solve the issue of student loan debt, pass the torch. If we're going to end gun violence for families who are fearful of sending their kids to school, pass the torch. Vice President, would you like to sing a torch song? I would. <laughs> I'm still holding on to that torch. Congressman, would you support Vice President uh, Biden if he's a nominee, or does he really need to pass oh, the torch? Absolutely. And what I would be looking to, uh, if he is our nominee, is you know who he assembles uh, as his team. And I, I had a very good conversation with the Vice President today. He could not have been more gracious and thanked me for bringing up the issue of uh, gun violence and, and said that he is looking to have a, a diverse you know, team to help him. And so uh, I, I'm excited for that. The lesson for me there, uh, Aaron, I guess, is, you know, when my two-year-old son Nelson now becomes old enough to run for president, uh, if I'm ever thinking about running for president again, I better do it before he's old enough and can throw that uh, line in my face if he's also on the stage. Well, I mean, yes, but, you know, but it was a point you raised. Uh, you know, obviously, it's something that came from your heart. You know, today there have been several other candidates. It's interesting you say you spoke to, uh, to Joe Biden, but also others have, you know, reached out to you via Twitter. Uh, your fellow California Kamala Harris wrote, Eric Swalwell, you're a great fighter yeah. for the people of California. We're a stronger nation because of your work to protect our children and our communities from gun violence. Uh, are you thinking of endorsing her? You know, I'm, I'm going to take some time. And I just, as I was coming on air, spoke with uh, Senator Warren and, and Senator Booker. And so, no, I'm going to take some time. I'm going to be looking at who will uh, elevate the issue of gun violence as their top uh, issue and to promise Americans that we don't have to live this way and that through policies we can put in place that has a majority of the support among Americans, we can ban and buy back assault weapons. We can have background checks and address uh, city violence uh, as well. You are obviously going to run for re-election to Congress now, and I want to turn to, uh, to that. Congressman Justin Amash, your colleague in Washington, who just left the Republican Party because he split with them, right? He supports impeachment proceedings. They want no parts of him anymore. He said this yesterday about your speaker, Nancy Pelosi's lack of support for the impeachment proceedings he, uh, a Republican, supports. Here he is. 
when she says things like, oh, I think that we need to have the strongest case before we go forward, what she's telling the American people is she doesn't think there's a strong case. If she doesn't think that, then she shouldn't open her mouth in the first place and say she thinks there's impeachable conduct. I do believe there's a strong case. I believe she believes there's a strong case, and if so, she should move forward and make sure that the American people understand what's going on. You know, Amash also said behind the scenes that a lot of his fellow Republicans are thanking him, thanking him for, for what he did. Uh, is he right about the speaker, that she keeps saying there's impeachable conduct, but she doesn't uh, support going ahead with impeachment proceedings, that, that ultimately what he's saying is she shouldn't have opened her mouth then? Well, I support an impeachment inquiry as well, uh, but I think Speaker Pelosi plays a different role than Mr. Amash and I do. You know, she's the conductor of the symphony, uh, and she has to make sure if we go toward impeachment that all the instruments are tuned and every performer in the symphony uh, is playing, you know, from the same, uh, you know, pages uh, and, 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 you know, in sync with each other. And so it's a different responsibility for her, and she hasn't taken it off the table uh, and mm -hmm. we have a big hearing coming up next week uh, with Bob Mueller coming in to testify. And I think that'll be illuminating for the American people. All right. Well, Congressman Swalwell, I know this was a, 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 a challenging day for you on some level, but uh, I thank you very much for coming on and talking with us. Thanks. The work goes on. Thank you, Aaron.